so obviously Andrew Breitbart also enjoyed this song. He also joins us right now. Andrew, uh, what do you think of Poacher Man? Oh, I love it. I can't believe it. it was just finished two hours ago. That's funny. I didn't know that. Talk about hot off the presses. It was done. That was a thing. That was mind-blowing. Well, I heard it uh, within two seconds of you sending it, and I'm, I'm now singing it in my head. And uh, You know, <clears throat> this guy's taken a lot of us for, for a ride. Uh, and in hindsight, it's kind of like date, dating a stripper. I say, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. This girl sees me. You don't understand. I know that she's a stripper, but she's not a stripper with me. We love each other. Oh, this and, time she'll and, be different with you. Yeah, yeah, and that's that because when I was dealing with my intellectual betters and people who are higher up in the food chain warning me of the moment we now find ourselves with this guy, I said, no, 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 no. I've been listening to him. This this guy's authentic. It's an authentic thing. I know he's a little kooky. I thought that all that kookiness, like the the proctology weirdness, like when he was saying I'm going to kill myself or I want to die, I thought all of the, that's of no saying, no dishonest person would ever offer such raw embarrassment. And he just kind of put him out, put himself out there to such an extreme. He was such an awkward person that 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 when he started to get into these narratives much of which he took from us it, i started to believe it because he was so passionate about it and, and and he wasn't he didn't deliver it in an anderson cooper kind of way that television prepared way he really let himself hang out there and and now we find ourselves looking through a series of breaches some of them very, very, very personal, and some of them very, very, very public that relate to other people and to other things. Yeah. But yeah. he is not an honorable person. He is not, uh, he, the truth has no agenda, question boldly, all that type of stuff <laughs> doesn't apply to him. Andrew Breitbart, I, I want to ask you something, because Gary said something I think was really interesting here, which is this, the, the final straw was this Tea Party thing, where, where, you know, of course, over the weekend... Or on Friday, famously, uh, Glenn Beck just basically he, he he flat out said, "I don't understand why the Tea Party is backing Gingrich, but is against Obama. It must be race." That's that. Those were his exact words. It must be race. Uh, this seems to have just opened the floodgates. Have you seen? I mean, you've been beating the drum about Beck for about six months now, or maybe even uh, longer than that. I, I, when was the last time I thought about him? I mean, but, look, you know, I have ADD. <laughs> I, I hyper focus when I focus, but. If if I if a if a birdie off to my left uh, catches my imagination, I'm I'm off on that birdie for you know I've been on Occupy Wall Street and haven't thought about Glenn Beck in months. Right, but but uh, this this opened the floodgates. That's it wasn't, the, until, uh, it wasn't until I saw that video, uh, someone sent it to me and I clicked on it and I said, what could this possibly mean? Because the what the person who sent me it, they said that he said that the Tea Party was racist. And I said, there's no way. And I watched it, and it's exactly what he said. And now he wants to say that he was saying that Newt Gingrich is a progressive. I go, there are a million ways to say that, (laughs) and there's a million ways to use hyperbole. But he did exactly what he did for a very calculated reason, the same reason he, in a very calculated way, said that he uh, would be open to supporting a Ron Paul third-party run when Ron Paul is running for the Republican uh, you know, ticket. Just the the mere thought of a Ron Paul third Paul uh, ticket would be devastating for Republicans. But you put them all together, you destroy the Tea Party, call it racist. You create a third party. You know, you have uh, four more years of uh, Barack Obama, and quite frankly, that's what a scaremonger and an apocalyptic doomsayer like. Uh, Glenn Beck needs in order in order to create a network. So you he think more gold. you think he this was a calculated thing then? A milk toast, middle of the road Republican is not going to be able to create the type of content uh, that that he needs in order to sustain a a nine ninety five a month media empire. Yeah. So you do think this was That's a calculated crazy. thing? What you do think this was a calculated uh, statement that he made? Uh, just to a hundred percent. You go, you know, 
first of all, he finds himself, interestingly, in the Andrew Breitbart disposition, uh, having to go on TV periodically in order to, to sell your wares or to tell a story. And he, he had the privilege for so many years to be on television uh, to complement his, his, <laughs> his radio show. And now I'm start, I think he's starting to realize the degree to which uh, he, he can't, that the, the television show is everything. Yeah. He's now starting to have withdrawals. He's starting to realize, like Howard Stern, Howard Stern at least had the money. Sirius gave him tons of stock, tens of millions of dollars, and you, he could sit back and say, okay, now I'm, I'm doing a very small, intimate fun house for the money. But right now, uh, Glenn Beck doesn't have that, that safety, he doesn't have the tens of millions of dollars uh, coming in in any security, and he no longer has that uh, platform that he had, that Fox News television show. He had to go on that uh, Judge Napolitano show and say something in order to get people to go check his new network. Right. And he said two things. Both of them are controversial because he doesn't have what we have, which is honest citizen journalism-based, truthful uh, investigative reporting. So he doesn't know how to investigate. He doesn't know how to find these stories on his own without poaching them. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Gary Eaton. That's uh, actually so, from Mandy Nay. That's actually from Liberty Chick. I got the title from Liber- oh, Liberty. Oh, Liberty Chick calls him poacher man. Poacher. Mandy. Oh, that's Mandy. Yes. Yeah, well, you know what? She used title. to work with the guy on the nine twelve project. That's right. I mean, there are sure so did. many people who were so invested in this guy who have gotten burned. And I, I feel bad for these uh, people who are so devoted to him that they won't look at the underlying facts on the things that he's done to alleged friends and uh, the way that he's poached and pilfered his way uh, to where he is now. Andrew, let's talk about this loyalty thing. On Twitter, I know that you've been you've been at this for about a week now, and uh, he's got a lot of, like, Glenn Beck has a lot of loyal fans and uh, friends that just don't seem to get it. They're, you're, I, you're trying. It seems like you're being very patient with them, actually, uh, in terms of explaining. <laughs> no, you I are. Say, per, I think I'm being overly persistent. <laughs> but, uh, are, do you feel like is, you're turning anybody? I, I can't help. I can't help... Um, constantly tweeting or constantly reinforcing my message. I am what I am, and I'm an honest person. I'm an, I have an emotional side, and when I sense that somebody's doing me wrong, uh, I think you can tell, like whether it be Wiener or whether it be uh, Beck, I want, I want, I've always felt this. I've always, you know, whether it be teachers that didn't like me or administrators at, at high school that didn't like me, I always wanted to prove to as many people that I was the one that was in the right. It's goofy. Uh, I admit it. And, I, and, and, and there are more productive things to do. But I, I think it's important as we go into the 2012 election cycle, he is a false prophet. I have no doubt of that. I mean, I, when I said that he's dead to me, that's because I don't think there's any redemption for him, because I don't think he has a centered, he's not a centered person. He, he is a sum of his addictions. You cannot create the truth has no agenda as your motto. Give a story on the air about how you came up with the truth has no agenda thing all by your lonesome. And then when you find out through Mandy that a guy by the name of Greg Opelka, his best man in his wedding, actually had a website called The Truth Has No Agenda. <laughs> he bought that website from him. It's a completely manufactured story about a motto that's about authenticity and telling the truth. And so when you start going down the list of things that he said that are completely untrue, he turned on James O'Keefe saying that he disagrees with the very concept of undercover videos. I listened to him on the radio show uh, go off saying, you cannot go undercover and pretend that you're something that you're not. That's outrageous. I said, wait a sec. You got the best ratings you've ever gotten by exploiting James O'Keefe for two weeks. You, you lied your way into getting the Acorn Riverside video uh, because he owned it. He knew that I was debating giving it to him, Hannity or O'Reilly, and he actually knew about it, so he went on the air 
and said, tomorrow we have the exclusive Riverside. And I said, oh, my God. Huh. And it, it worked. It worked because he owned it. What was I going to do, not give it to him? I guess I could have at the time, but I didn't think of him as a snake. He's a very Machiavellian guy. Wow. I had not heard that. Have you told that story before? That's the first time I've heard that. No, no, no. It was no. In, in, in addition to that, I'm starting to piece it all together because <laughs> I always thought that he was just kind of tripping up. Uh, I, I, I talked to him the Sunday before the Thursday that we broke the acorn story and said, we're breaking the embargo. The embargo is Thursday at 9, 9 a.m. East Coast time. And he went on Tuesday, the day after Labor Day, on Fox and & Friends and teased it. He broke the embargo uh, two days in advance by teasing the thing. That was an absolute breach. Wow. But we were so excited internally right. that he was owning it that we just kind of accepted it. But you, I, I go back to my first moments with him. Even in the Acorn thing, he was lying. He wasn't taking credit. I was writing letters to Joe Carey, his producer at the time, saying, wait a sec, you're not giving credit on the air. You're doing it on your radio show, which is low impact, but on the TV show, you're not doing it. And I sent letters, and I said, I'm not going to give you any of these future videos unless you start rightfully crediting it. So we had to internally fight for credit at the very beginning. And if you want me to have to show emails on that, I'm more than happy to do it. Wow. All Ouch. right. Really fast. Again, we're speaking with Andrew Breitbart and Gary Eaton. We're talking about Gary's new song, Poacher Man, which, of course, is about Glenn Beck and the recent events uh, that has sort of uh, created this this latest uh, explosion of anger toward Glenn Beck for all of his misdeeds over the past. And Andrew, Andrew, I think that you're. It's interesting because it's true. You sort of overlook all these things. You overlook all these things, and it's just sort of you file them away, and then something happens, like this tea party thing. And I really do want to oh, go. That's my stripper girlfriend analogy. I'm like, <laughs> I love what that. Are you doing there in the corner? That's already on you Twitter. Know, I like that's the guy until he stole my flat screen, and he, you know, and he took my car and wrecked it too. <laughs> Oh, really fast. Uh, Liberty Chick in our chat room, Mandy, wants to um, clear something up. It's Mike Opelka, uh, Opelka who had the URL, not Gre uh, Greg. Greg is his oh, okay. brother. Okay, right, 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 right. Um, so I, I, wanted, I wanted to just kind of explore this one last thing with you, Andrew, because I, I, know, I feel like I know you pretty well now, and I've seen you talk off the record, offline, not on the radio, not anywhere public, about the Tea Party and your passionate, passionate defense of the Tea Party. I, I think many could say that you've put yourself in great peril over this last uh, year and a half, two years. Uh, uh, for the sake of defending the Tea Party. You've been out there sometimes all by yourself defending the idea that the Tea Party is the furthest thing from racist. Uh, given all of the time, all of the danger you put yourself in, all of the, the blood, sweat, and tears that you've put in, talk to me about how it felt personally for you to see somebody like Glenn Beck you know, once we feel like we finally have this behind us, to have him go on national television and say this horrible thing about the Tea Party. Did, did well, this it... isn't the first time that I felt that he was playing a funny game with the Tea Party. Uh, I felt that that 828 event last year, two weeks ahead of the anniversary of 912, uh -huh. I mean, it's called the 912 Project. 912 is like a big, big, big deal. 912. Uh, we, we launched the Acorn videos on uh, nine nine, so on nine uh, or nine ten, nine ten nine eleven. We had two videos, Baltimore, then Washington D.C. With the knowledge that on nine twelve, uh, in the year oh nine, that that there would be a large group of people in the mall, and as it happened, there were a third of the signs and the placards of the million or so people that were there. Uh, were, were acorn driven. So we, we put the videos out there knowing that 912 was a significant thing for the Tea Party, which was already under attack. And so for a year later, for 912 to be uh, uh, sabotaged with an impromptu event by uh, uh, yeah, a self serving event in the same location where the, the, the 912 event was to be, where he diverted it away from fiscal responsibility and, and a return to the Constitution to him moving it more towards an evangelical sort of godlike thing. Not that I disagree with the message, 
but it was him trying to take that Tea Party to, to take away the 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 Tea Party right, away to steal their thunder. Thing. Yeah, to steal the thunder, steal its thunder, and drive it towards the cult and reappropriate of it. Yeah, Glenn Beck. Yes. Uh, so, so that's where you first started, and then, and then it comes full circle, and he's actually joining the legions of people who were falsely claiming that the that the Tea Party oh, well, is racist. God. The thing is, it would have been very difficult for anyone other than Janine Garofalo, certainly not Brian Williams or George Stephanopoulos, to to this week or last week bring up the Tea Party as racist after a two to three month. Uh, Herman Cain surge right. uh, that ended at, in in an act of desperation by the mainstream media. Mind you, they were successful, and quite frankly, there where there's smoke, there was fire. But for two and a half, three months, uh, this was all Herman Cain all the time, and it was fueled by Tea Party passion. He, his he was the he, he, this election cycle will go down as the where the Tea Party invested itself for better or worse in Herman Cain. Well, which negates the Tea Party is racist meme. Of course. So when he brought up race in that weird hypothetical, which does not reinforce anything in his attempts to use hyperbole to make the point that that uh, Gingrich is a progressive, it didn't help it at all. The only reason he could potentially bring it up is in order to cause mayhem. Well, and I did love the, so many people coming after you uh, 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 on Twitter and in other places saying, well, you're just doing this because you're a Gingrich lover and you're defending Gingrich. And and you look over at our sites and then at that very moment we had, you know, six videos and maybe three articles of big government all slamming Gingrich. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like, and the thing is, He's sold everybody on the truth has no agenda thing, so I, I hinge my questioning him on, wait a sec, he says to question boldly, why is it that Andrew Breitbart, for whom he's used tons of stuff, he's publicly praised me, don't I deserve uh, a, 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 an answer? Don't I deserve... Right. a hearing. If I'm telling an untruth, if I'm questioning boldly, but improperly, and not based upon the truth... Doesn't he want to make turn me into a, a, a pa- you know a pancake? Doesn't he want to prove that I'm a liar? Right. This is his Yet big opportunity. He avoids me, and he's avoided me every step of the way on the poaching, the the stealing of content, yeah. uh, of the pilfering, of the bad mouthing be, behind the scenes, of the lying about the charade stuff, uh, about uh, 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 about everything. Yeah. All right, guys. Gary, thank you. Oh, oh, Andrew. You know what? Before you go, I just wanted a, a quick word from you. If you're if you're able to, or if you're in the mood for it, um, uh, Christopher Hitchens passed away today, uh, ju- like hours ago. And uh, I know that you uh, were uh, a great admirer of his work. I wonder if you have a few words about him, or if it's too soon. Uh, well, I, I would say that Hitchens and uh, Camille Paglia. And I, I, I think I told this to Hitchens once, not that he wanted to hear, but Hitchens and Talia transformed me. Like they, they're, they were the ones that that caused me to think twice about liberalism, or at least to think outside of the box, and to make me realize with the the the, the words that they were taught using, the ideas that they were. Uh, uh, contemplating were so much deeper than what I got in college that the insecurity that they that they spawned in me caused me to go on a self-searching uh, journey <laughs> that has brought me to wherever I am. I mean, I can't think of anybody uh, more influential in in terms of my intellectual curiosity than uh, than than Camille Paglia. And and Christopher Hitchens. Wow, that's and, uh, that's... and I he, he intimidated the living daylights out of me. <laughs> um, I wouldn't have debated him. I mean, I love going up against anyone, and I would never go up against him. Uh, I do. I do. I must say though, uh, in 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 his last years, as he was putting the exclamation park on his atheism, uh, I loved I loved his arguments. But I was always pulling for uh, 
Dinesh D'Souza in those. In those. And I, I hope Dinesh D'Souza uh, is correct that there is a heaven because uh, I, I'd like to think Christopher Hitchens is there because yeah. he was uh, just an intellectually honest human being in an era when uh, intellectual honesty is not uh, heralded to the degree it should. Amen to that. Rest in peace, Christopher Hitchens. Andrew Breitbart, thanks for joining us tonight.